Welcome back everybody. I have missed you guys. It's been a little while, but I am back today with a new video and I want to talk about some updates that we have in Capture 120 that were just released a couple days ago. Pretty excited about this. The first big part of this is that you may know that there are different versions of Capture 1. You have the Express versions, which typically are very reduced in features, but they work with a specific camera model. Then you have dedicated versions, so you have a Sony version, a Fujifilm version, so on and so forth. Then you have Capture One Pro, and then you have a subscription version that you can do with that. So the whole idea here is that Capture One is able to address different price points versus different needs and provide a solution that's really good and it's really affordable. So the big news is there is now a dedicated Nikon version. So that is some pretty big news. If you're a Nikon user, you can get into Capture One if you only use Nikon and you can save a little bit of money there. I will put links to Capture One below, but there's a lot of new stuff besides a new logo, a website redesign. There's some really cool new features and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So the first major improvement that I want to talk about in Capture One deals with the clone tool as well as the healing brush tool. Now, in previous versions of Capture One, these were a little bit limiting to say the least. And so let me give you an example here. If we go over to this image, I've got a model here and I'm going to zoom in and I want to clean up some blemishes in the face here. The way we used to have to do this is you'd go over to the layers panel and you're going to see the drop down menu. It's a little tick mark next to the plus sign. We would go and select the layer type and in this case it's going to be a heal layer, select your healing layer, and we would go ahead and use option to select a source point and clone from there. And unfortunately, the way it used to work, you were now done. You could only have one healing mark per layer, and so that was really limiting. And so in that case, there was a lot of need for round tripping through Photoshop if you had a lot of work to do. It was just really kind of limiting. Now that has all changed. I want to show you how it works now. So let's go ahead and delete this healing layer right now, and I'm going to plus the delete sign, get rid of that. Now what I'm going to do is just grab the healing brush and I want you to see what happens if I grab a blemish on the face I'm just going to paint and you're going to see a couple things happen. First of all, it automatically selects a source point for the healing mark. You can move that around, adjust it if needed. And then the other important thing is over here on the layers panel, it automatically made the layer for me. Now, here's where it really gets cool. We have one edit point made. I can continue to go ahead and draw some more and it's gonna make another. Here's another one here and another one here. And in fact, now we have unlimited healing points that we can do on this layer. So now you're able to go in here and actually do work that used to have to round trip into other applications. The cool thing about this is there doesn't seem to be any sacrifice in performance. You can stack these till your heart's content and it just works. It's very cool. And let's grab something that's a little bigger here. This model has a scar on her cheek here. I can go ahead and just paint that whole thing out there. And once I do that, it's going to select an auto source point. And maybe we want to move this around and just get it to blend a little better. So we're starting to look pretty good here. I'm just going to do a couple more of these real quick. And you can see that this starts to go really fast. And in terms of performance, also bear in mind that I'm doing a screen recording while I'm doing this. So I'm actually pushing this computer a little hard. It's not the newest computer in the world. It's a 2014. So anyway, my performance is excellent. And basically, when you bring your cursor outside the window, you're going to see them disappear. So you can do a little before and after. And and it works really well. Speaking of before and after, I have something amazing that I want to show you because this has been totally overhauled and revamped in this latest version of Capture One. Before, when we wanted to do a before and after, you would either option click on either the reset button at the top or you could do that on a per tool basis. You can still do it on a per tool basis, but now there's an even better option for looking at global before and after adjustments. For our purposes here, let's select another image. This is a shot I did a few years ago of my good friend Molly. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to apply a user style. And so if I go up under my styles menu, I can see, oh, wait a second, what is this? I've got TF presets 01 and 02. I have a set of presets that I started with a year ago, and we just had the preset pack one. I've also released preset pack two. These were originally for Lightroom. I actually have adapted both sets for Capture One now, and so I'll put a link below if you were interested, but this makes a quick way of starting edits and getting looks. What I'm going to do is just pick the first one here, which is uh, my preset called Cathedral, and it looks pretty good right off the bat. Let's say, that I want to do a before and after. Well, now up on the top right hand side of the screen here on the toolbar, you're going to see a little button that says before. If I click that, it's going to show me my before and it lights up yellow there or orange. I'm going to select it again and that's after. So we can also toggle this by using the key Y or the letter Y on the keyboard. So when I press Y, we see before, we see after, before and after. Another cool thing we can do, there's a little drop down thing here. So if I click that, you can see we have two options. There's a full view and 
split view slider. If I hit split view slider, it gives me the before and after here. So I can just simply kind of drag that back and forth to see my before and after edits, which is kind of cool. And this works really well, but sometimes it gets a little tedious when you want to just do a quick before and after. It all depends on what you're doing. There's a shortcut for this toggle too. So it's shift Y. So shift Y will toggle between full view and split view and the letter Y on the keyboard toggles between before and after. So you can see that uh, you get some options here and you also get speed because that is essential. One other really, really cool thing that I want to show you here, I can select multiple images. So check this out. If I select, let's say these four, it's going to give me sliders on all four images here. And you can see that I can at the same time do before and after previews. And then also uh, the context of just doing a full preview is there too. So if I go shift Y on the keyboard, there's before, I'm going to hit Y again, after, before, after, or I can do the split view on four images at once. And I am really impressed with the performance that we're getting out of Capture 120 now because I'm not noticing any lag at all. Everything is super fast. And especially with the cloning and healing tools, I mean, you're really doing a lot of work because essentially Capture One is a raw converter. It's not really an editor like Photoshop where it's able to do destructive and non-destructive edits. Everything has to be non-destructive in a raw editor. So it's a lot of information that's going down. They've really done a superb job with this. There's one other thing that I want to show you guys on this, and this is the improved ability when importing a catalog from Lightroom. One thing that's important to point out here is, first of all, I've been working in what we call a session. Now in Capture One, I've talked about this before in videos, there's essentially two formats you can work in. You can work in a traditional catalog where you have a whole ton of images, or you can work in what we call sessions. Sessions are a little more portable. It puts everything in a folder and allows you to be able to just share these with other people who may need to have access to be able to edit the images. Just depends if you're working with the team. I like sessions for things like this because I can just put all my demo images in them. I can save them for later. I can recall them, so on and so forth. But what we're going to do is if we're going to import a catalog, we cannot import a catalog into a session. We have to create a session. So what I'm going to do is close this out and I am going to just go into the file menu here and we are going to say new catalog or shift command in. It's going to ask us to give it a name. I'll call this test catalog and you tell it where you want it to live. Template's going to be blank. Let's go ahead and say OK. And it's going to open up the catalog window here. So what we're going to do is go under the file menu at the top of the screen and we are going to say import catalog. And it's going to say from what? Aperture? Capture One? No, we're going to go for Lightroom, let's say. And so if I go for Lightroom, it is important to kind of read these prompts because I'm not actually going to import my entire Lightroom catalog in this video because it's got like 70 or 80,000 images and it's just going to take forever. So the first thing you need to know is that it will take a while to do if you have a lot of images. The second thing you need to understand is not every edit is going to come in like you think it is. Capture One does have the ability to preserve things like collections and stuff like that, but with the actual image edit, both of these are raw interpreting editors. And so that means they actually interpret the raw file differently. The tool sets are all different. And so there are some things that you probably won't expect to come in with your catalog. But the other cool thing that's really cool, and it says this on this dialog box here, here, is that your catalog and images are secure. So basically you can import your Lightroom collection. It's going to bring the images in, but it's not going to impact those images as they're saved on the disk or how they work in Lightroom. You're still going to be able to open Lightroom and and work off of that too. They're just simply going to share a catalog. Now, I don't really recommend going that method all the way because when you import new images, you're going to have to remember to import them into both software. So it becomes a little difficult. But anyway, this is a great improvement. It allows you just to basically switch over an entire catalog if that's what you want to do. I personally prefer to work in sessions because everything's sort of already in Lightroom and I do use both platforms. And so I will export what I need to work on and use a session profile for that. And so it's just two different ways of working. It depends on what you want to do. Anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts. So if you have any questions, leave me a comment below. Hit like if you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. There's a lot of cool stuff coming up this week. Until then, later.